Hi Gokdina, so today I'm going to take you through a couple of quick examples of how to solve equations. So I suppose the first thing just to point out is that an equation is something that has an equal sign in it. So it's basically two expressions that are let equals to each other. So in our first example we have x plus 4 is equals to 10. Here we are trying to get the x by itself, okay? So we're trying to solve for x. So we need to ask ourselves, at the moment this equation is balanced, it is equals to each other. So how do we keep it balanced while still getting the x by itself? So the correct thing that we need to do here is we need to get rid of the plus 4 from the left hand side of our equation. So we want to, we want to get rid of it, so what's the opposite of adding 4? It's taking away 4. Now, again, in an equation, you need to keep it balanced. So what I do to the left side, I must do to the right side. So I must also minus 4 from the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, then, the plus 4 minus 4 is going to go down to 0. So we're left with x. And on the right-hand side, we just calculate 10 minus 4. Therefore, x is equals to 6. Okay, moving on to the second example, we have y minus 5 is equals to 7. So some number, take 5, gives us 7. Again, we want the y by itself. So how do I get rid of the minus 5? We're going to do the opposite, which would be adding 5. So we're going to add 5, and again, to keep it balanced, we're going to add 5 to the other side. And therefore, we're left with y is equals to 12. The next example we're going to have a quick look at is 5a is equals to 30. So again, what is happening on the left-hand side? We have a 5 stuck onto our letter a. What does that actually mean? So for those of you who may have forgotten, when a number and a letter are stuck beside each other in algebra, there is an invisible multiplication sign between them. So we want to get the a by itself. How do I get rid of the number that's multiplying the a? Well, we do the opposite to multiplication, we divide. So you're going to divide by 5. And again, what you do to the left-hand side, you're going to do to the right-hand side. So we're also going to divide the right-hand side by 5. 5 divided by 5 gives me 1. So we can just write down A. And on the right-hand side, 30 divided by 5 gives me 6. So A is equals to 6. Example number four then, it says some number divided by three gives me nine. So again, we want the x to be by itself. So we need to think, well, what do we need to do to get rid of that divided by three? So what is the opposite of dividing something by three? It's multiplying by three. So we're gonna multiply both sides by three. And again, remember, it's not three multiplied by three on the left-hand side, it's one third multiplied by three they will cancel to give you 1, so you're going to be left with x is equals to 9 multiplied by 3, which gives me 27. Okay guys, so we're going to go on now to have a quick look at two-step equations. So the examples in the previous um, slide were all one-step equations because we had to just do one thing to... Um, get the letter by itself. However, in these examples, we have to do two things to get the letter by itself. And what I mean by that, if we look at the first example, we can see that there's a two in front of the a, so we will have to remove that, but there's also a minus four. So I suppose we need to get rid of both of those things. Now, in theory, it doesn't matter which one you get rid of first, but when you divide things, sometimes you'll get fractions or decimals. So I would always recommend that you leave the thing that's stuck onto the A, so the 2 in this case, until the last step. So I would always recommend to my students to get rid of the minus 4 first of all. So again, ask yourself the same question. How do I get rid of minus 4? What's the opposite of minusing 4? And of course, that is adding 4. So we're going to start off by adding 4 to both sides of my equation. On the left-hand side, they're obviously going to cancel out, and we bring down everything that's left on the left-hand side, which is 2a. Then we're going to do 20 plus 4, which gives me 24. Next question, we're back to a one-step equation, and we say, okay, what is the 2 doing to the a at the moment? It's multiplying. What's the opposite of multiplying by 2? It's dividing by 2. And you're getting the hang of this now. Hopefully, we're going to um, divide those into each other, and that gives you 1a. And then 24 divided by 2 gives you 12. 
Let's apply the same logic to example number 2. So 5x plus 2 is equals to 12. So we want to get rid of the 5 in front of the x and we want to get rid of the plus 2. And again, I always recommend you get rid of the thing that's plusing or minusing before you get rid of the thing that's multiplying or dividing the x. So step 1 is we get rid of plus 2. The opposite of adding 2 is minusing 2. On the left hand side they're going to give you 0 so you're left with 5x and on the right hand side 12 minus 2 is 10. Again we're down to a one step equation here. Get rid of the 5 by dividing both sides by 5 and therefore x is going to be equals to 10 divided by 5 which gives me 2. Now let's say you wanted to check that you've done these correctly. Okay, so it's always a nice idea to maybe quickly check that you've done it correctly. The way that you check is that you substitute your answer into your original question. Okay, so basically if I take away the A here and I substitute in the 12, then when I figure out my multiplication and subtraction, it should give me an answer that's on the right hand side, which is 20. So let's just try that just to show you how it works. So 2... Remember when you substitute, you put a bracket around the original letter. So it's 2, bracket 12, minus 4, and that should give me 20. So 2 times 12 gives me 24, minus 4 gives me 20. And oh look, 20 is equals to 20, and that means that we've done that correctly. So I would recommend, you know, particularly for the slightly longer questions, that you do check your work to see if you've done it correctly. Um, for the second question, we can also do a quick check if we wish. So we'll substitute in 2 into where x was. So 5 times 2 plus 2, that should give me 12. 5 times 2 gives me 10. And look, we've done it correctly. 12 is equals to 12. So that's just a little spot check that you can use. So the next example I want to show you is when we have variables on both sides of the equal sign. Basically what that means is that instead of just having like an X or a Y or an A or a B on either the left or the right side, you actually have them on both sides of the equation. So we just need to do a little bit extra work to sort that out before we go into our um, removal of the terms around the letter. So what we need to think about in this is that we only want the letter on one side of my equation. Now again, it doesn't matter which side of the equation that you choose. If we have a look at it, we have a 10x here and a 6x here. I would generally recommend that you get rid of the smaller number because then you're going to be left with a positive answer on either the left or the right side. But actually, it doesn't even matter if you want to follow that rule because in the end, you will still get the same answer. So for this example, I'm going to say, okay, I want either the 10x or the 6x. One of those is going to stay and I need to get rid of the other one. So I'm going to choose to get rid of the 6x. How do I get rid of the 6x from the right-hand side? I minus it away. And again, what I do to the right-hand side, I need to do to the left, so I must minus 6x away from this side. So we're going to sort out the left and the right-hand side. So I'm going to write my equal sign directly underneath, as I always do. 6x minus 6x on the right-hand side, that's just going to cancel to give me 0. What's left on the right-hand side? It's 27. Let's sort out the left-hand side. 10x minus 6x gives me 4x. And is there anything else that I haven't used yet on the left? Yes, there is. There's a plus 7. And now we're back to the, what we were doing in the last slide. We're back to a two-step equation. So again, what do I want to get rid of first? I always want to get rid of the thing that's either adding or subtracting first. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get rid of the 7 by minusing 7 from both sides. They're going to give me 0, so I'm left with 4x is equals to 20. I want to get rid of the 4, so I divide both sides by 4, and I get x is equals to 5. So I suppose the key thing with these questions is to get rid of one of the variables on one of the sides by minusing it away. I, like I said, I generally would recommend to get rid of the smaller number because it just means that you won't have a negative, but actually if you do it the other way around, it will still give you the same answer. Okay guys, let's have a look at one more example. So we have 3a plus 5 is equals to 5a minus 7. So again, our aim here is to get one of the letters uh, removed from either the left or the right hand side so we can come up with uh, a solution for the value of a. 
you can choose to get rid of the 3A or the 5A. It literally doesn't matter once you follow the steps that I've gone through. For this example, I'm going to get rid of the 3A because it's the smaller um, number. But again, if you got rid of the 5A, same answer at the end. So let's remove the 3A by minusing 3A from both sides. On the left-hand side, they're obviously going to give me 0, so I'm going to be left with 5. And on the right-hand side, we've got 5A minus 3A, which gives me 2A, and then we're left with a minus 7. People might say, oh, well, this is the first time that the letter has been on the right-hand side. It's an equation which is equals, so it doesn't matter if your variable or your letter is on the left or the right-hand side. I think that's very important to realise. Okay, final thing we need to do then is to get the A by itself. So on the right-hand side, we're going to first of all get rid, rid of the minus 7 by plusing 7 to both sides. Uh, therefore, we're going to be left with 2A on the right-hand side, and we're going to be left with 12 on the left-hand side. Then I want to get the A by itself, so I'm going to div divide both sides by 2, and therefore I'm going to be left with A is equals to 6. Now again, some people might look at that and say, well, that, that's the other way around, but it, it doesn't matter. You could actually, if you really wanted to, you could rewrite that as A is equals to 6. It literally will give you the same answer. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. You can then substitute those numbers into your original equation to double check that you've done it correctly. Um, and again, your calculator will be a valuable resource when you're doing these quickly um, to check your workings. All right, guys, so if you can please have a go at these questions for me, if you want to pause the video, try them on a piece of paper, and then you can play the video and see how you got on. So hopefully you have tried these questions yourself. Let's really quickly run through the answers to make sure that you're understanding these okay. So for the first one, I'm going to get rid of the five multiplied by X. So I'm gonna divide both sides by five. And therefore I'm gonna get X is equals to nine. Next one, I'm gonna multiply both sides by four to get rid of the divided by four. Therefore X is equals to 12. Next one, I'm going to get rid of the minus 5, so that x will be by itself, so I'm going to plus 5 to both sides, therefore x is going to give me 15. Moving on to number 4, I want to get rid of the plus 7, so I'm going to minus 7 from both sides, and therefore y is equals to 6. Next up we have a two-step equation. So the first step I'm going to get rid of the plus 10 by minusing 10 from both sides. So I'm going to be left with 2b is equals to 4. Next I need to get rid of the 2, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So therefore b is equals to 2. Another two-step equation. Again, I've just mixed up the order of the 3 and the plus 5a. It's the exact same method. So step 1 I want to get rid of the 3. So I'm going to minus 3 from both sides. Therefore, 5a is going to give me 15. And I want to get rid of the 5 in front of the a, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And therefore, a is going to give me 3. And finally, we have a variable on either side of my equal sign. So step 1 is I need to get um, all of the x's onto one side. I'm going to pick the 7x to stay, so that means I need to get rid of the 3x by minusing 3x from both sides. On the left hand side then 7x minus 3x is going to give me 4x. I'm going to leave the plus 2 there. 3x minus 3x gives me 0, so I'm left with 18. Two step equation here again, minusing 2 first of all, so I'm left with 4x is equals to 16. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Oops, running out of room there. Um, and therefore, x is equals to 4. Hopefully that was helpful and again always remember with these questions that it's a balance scale so you're trying to keep a balance all the time what you do to one side you do to the other.